we also tend to uh, be what I call the words I use are toxic independence. And what why it's toxic is that we basically do things because we're faster and smarter and good at them, which most of us are, um, than someone else. So we don't delegate. We just do them. And then we wonder why we're not getting help and what's wrong. We also tend to focus on the negative, and this is one of my personal specialties. In pediatrics and primary care pediatrics, we take perfectly healthy children, and our job all day is to figure out what's wrong with them. So then we go home noticing what's wrong at home, what's wrong with dinner, who hasn't done their homework, what isn't clean. And our, our that lens makes our life much more challenging. Um, so ask yourself, are you focusing on the negative? all the time. Maybe um, rather than just being Pollyanna, you can just focus equally on the negative and the positive. I think that can be um, a really helpful way to think about it. Because I think many of us think, well, you just want me to think positive and make something that's not okay, okay. And that's not actually the answer. The answer is to have a more balanced approach. A few others, hypervigilance, we tend to think more thinking is better, ruminating is better. We'll figure out the answer the longer we think and the longer we study. That's obviously exhausting. More and hard is better. That gets us into a lot of leadership roles that maybe um, aren't exactly aligned and or valuing the hard work and the suffering and collective suffering. Shame, blame, and guilt, I want to mention because these ones are very much acculturated in medicine. So shame is part of our training. When I trained, we ask people questions till they don't know the answer. And that is a shame-based learning. If you think about, um, I don't know what you call it in your hospital, but m and or peer review or however you do that, it's pretty much a, a blame situation. Where's the fault? Where's the problem when we have a um, undesirable outcome? When human bodies have undesirable outcomes, whether there's any blame. If we want to learn, we actually want to be not releasing cortisol and norepinephrine and impacting our amygdala in ways that um, we're not creative, we're not thinking about um, open-minded and um, learning. We want to be releasing oxytocin, which helps you come up with creative solutions. And so that is not shame, blame, and or guilt. And many people in medicine make most of our decisions about guilt. We squeeze in patients from guilt. We... Um, pick up shifts from guilt. And it isn't that we don't want to help. And I'll get to ways of thinking about it that get you out of shame, blame, and guilt. But I might even ask the question, you know, what would caring do? Caring for me, caring for my colleagues, caring for the patients. Caring is a is a energy that can help you figure out the answer to these things. So you're not making decisions from shame, blame, and guilt and bathing yourself in cortisol, which is clearly not a recipe for sustainability in medicine. So if um, anyone wants to put some of these thoughts into the chat box, the last two I want to bring up are imposter syndrome, which I think many, many, many people struggle with. And it's a little, it's very much in my mind, an overused term, but I wanted to share a story that I recently was working with a gentleman who had been practicing medicine for 38 years. And when we talked about this list of all these thought patterns and everyone was sharing their specialty, he said, I, imposter syndrome is my specialty. And so when I heard that, I kind of had a, a jaw drop. Um, this tells me that we all think we're imposters. And so therefore, none of us are actually imposters. Being an, feeling like you're an imposter is just part of the way we were trained. And maybe stepping out of that and just acknowledging that like, wow, everyone in medicine is feeling like an imposter. It's a hard job. There's always more to learn. We compare and despair. We judge each other. And that it doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with you. It's just the way that your brain is thinking about it. So, and then the other one is scarcity mindset, because certain specialties, and I know we have all specialties listening here, but like anesthesiologists and ER docs are experts at the scarcity mindset. What don't they have? What might not be in the room? I know from PEDS, you know, when we get called to a code, we bring our own bag of supplies because they will, might not have it. This is a sort of an example of both scarcity and catastrophizing, but we tend to bring the scarcity mindset everywhere. We have time scarcity. We have vacation scarcity. We have um, scarcity of support and help. 
And so just thinking to yourself, where is the scarcity mindset getting in your way? Where do you live your practice from scarcity mindset? And might you just want to notice the opposite? Like maybe most of the time you have enough time. Most of the time you have enough supplies. And this isn't to say we don't speak up. It's just to say you want to notice your brain's default.